Well, hi everyone. It's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and oops, put this get this hook out of the way. I am just putting the finishing touches on a bun beanie that we are calling the crochet dreamy hat. I'm going to show you how to finish it in two different ways though. So there we go. Just putting the finishing touches on this. All right, so there's two ways that I'm gonna show you. One is this crocheting around elastic so you can make it the bun beanie. Uh, bun beanie means that you put your ponytail through the top of the hat. My girls really like doing that, especially when they you know get up early in the morning and need to go for a walk. Uh, here is the finished pom-pom style. And how I attach it is just by sewing a button underneath and it had an elastic on that pom-pom. I pull it through and twist it around. So here's the pom-pom version. So basically these are the dreamy hats that match the dreamy scarf that is on our website. However, um, I have had to substitute, found different yarn to work with since Red Heart Dreamy is discontinued. This is Red Heart Super Saver Brushed. I am using three different stitches in this hat. This is back loop single crochet, herringbone half double crochet, and this is a cluster stitch followed by a single crochet. I'll help you get started. We'll work some decreases so the hat goes in at the top and we'll be good. It's pretty, um, Easy. I do want you to get stitch markers, especially if you've never joined and turned rounds. So here's what the seam of the back looks like. All right. So I think that's it. Oh, I used an eye hook and I am recommending the, Su the Susan Bates style hook. It's got kind of a sharp point and the edge really helps you grab for the herringbone stitch. So if you're getting, having trouble working that herringbone stitch, maybe give a Susan Bates hook a try. All right, thank you for stopping by and enjoy the tutorial. So let's begin the hat with the brim portion and let's chain 10 chains. So we're going to be working on this portion right here. If you're using different yarn, just chain to about two and a half inches. Begin in the second chain from the hook with a single crochet and work one single crochet into each chain for a total of nine single crochets. After we work that last single crochet, let's chain one, turn our work, and on the first single crochet of the row, let's work underneath both V's or just do a regular single crochet where you usually work under both V's. And now we will work just into the back loop with single crochet. So when you look down at the top of the stitches, we are working in the loop that's the furthest away from you.
in the last stitch of the row, let's work underneath both V's or, you know, just work a regular single crochet, not back loop. Chain one and turn your work and repeat. Work the first stitch underneath both loops and then work into the back loops until you get to the last stitch and work regular single crochet. Continue making this band for about 64 rows or about three inches less than the circumference of the head that you're making it for. So I am making it for a 22 inch head circumference. So this will be about 19 inches long. Okay, so I have about 64 rows and it was about 19 inches, just laying here flat, so I stretched it to 22. But if you want your hat a little bit tighter, make fewer rows. If you need it a little bit bigger, make more rows. But this is gonna be a pretty flexible way you can make this hat. Um, the number of rows doesn't really matter. Okay, but what we do need to do is take a minute and sew this band together. So I usually just grab a tapestry needle and use the tail, and I probably should have given myself a slightly longer tail, but we'll just go ahead and work with this. So I'm going to work underneath the two loops of the starting chain and then I am going to work through one of the loops. I'm just going to do this first one carefully. All right, I'll do a couple, make sure it looks nice and neat. And uh, just weave this tail in and we're good. And we are done there. I kind of backtrack and then go under a few stitches and and is done. Clip this off. Okay, now I'm going to really suggest that you get a couple stitch markers. Have some stitch markers on hand, especially if you've never joined and turned around. So here we are. We have our band here and we're going to work now around the top edge of the band, the band, but we need to get a nice base. So we're just going to simply chain one. It's not going to count as anything except to get us up here. And I want you to carefully look at the end of each row. And in the smallest hole, we're going to work two single crochets. 
okay? And around that very first single crochet that you made, the first V, I want you to put the stitch marker in that stitch. So we know that was the first single crochet of the round. Now, skip that next larger space and look for the smaller one and work two single crochets in that space. So we're skipping the end of the row. Maybe it'll be easier to see this is pointing that direction. We're gonna kind of go down in the valley at the end of that row and work two single crochets. So we're skipping a row, working two over here. So no matter how many rows of um, that you made for the width, and especially if you're using different yarn, just make sure you're working two stitches per the end of one row and then skip a row. And always work in pairs. We need an even number of stitches around this band. So working in, in uh, pairs accomplishes that goal for you. And it's easy to know that you got an even number. All right, I've worked my way all the way around and I'm about to work my last two stitches in this valley. And if you've never joined and turned before, I'm going to encourage you to also mark that very last single crochet that you just made. And by mark, I mean, sorry, get this hook out of the way. Put the stitch marker underneath those two little V's right there. You can see, I need a little bit bigger stitch marker, but anyway, okay? So we've got those two V's. Now, we're always going to join to the first stitch of the round, so that's where this stitch marker comes in handy. So we know exactly which V to insert our hook under. We're gonna pull through with a slip stitch, chain one. We're going to turn our work. And now we know exactly where we're going to work our first stitch. So sometimes that can get confusing because you have your join and your chain one. And if you don't have this marked, you accidentally can start your first round into the chain. So having this first the last stitch of the round marked really helps. Work your first stitch. Well, actually, whoops, it's not gonna be a single crochet. Now we're going to work our first round of herringbone half. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through the first loop on the hook, and pull through the final two. Now stop right there, look for that little V and mark it. Mark that stitch so that you know that was the first stitch of the round. Now, if you want to mark where you joined the round, you could do that too. I sort of can always tell because I look for this bar that is going down into a stitch. But if you can see it more easily right now, go ahead and mark that too. Then that way that you know that that's the last stitch that you'll be working. Let's work one complete round of herringbone half double crochet into the top of each single crochet. So again, for a refresher for that stitch, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, and, and sometimes I have to pinch right here, pull through that first loop, then pull through two. And I will say these Susan Bates hooks really help with this as well. All 
right, this is, this is how it's helpful. <laughs> See where your last stitch should be. So I've got one more here, two more. Take my marker out, make the last stitch. Go ahead and mark it again if you're just unsure. Because for the longest time when I would chain and turn, I could not tell what stitch. So just make it easy on yourself and mark it. And now here we go. We're gonna join underneath the V's that we marked over here. Join with the slip stitch and chain one. And that's what I'm saying. If you would like to just mark that join, go ahead. Now turn we're gonna work one more round of herringbone. Get that marked. Right after you make it, mark it. And let's work one more round of herringbone and then we'll do that pretty little textured area of the hat. All right, back again with that second round of herringbone half double crochet. I'll work my final stitch, join to my marked stitch, chain one and turn. And now into this first stitch of the round, we are going to make a cluster, kind of like a half double crochet cluster. So I just yarned over, I'm gonna pull up a loop, yarn over, insert my hook and pull up a loop and yarn over and pull through all the loops. Now, I'll mark this one for sure because it can get tricky looking at those little loops and I want to make sure I join to the top of that stitch when I get back. Now the next stitch will be a single crochet. So let's do that uh, cluster. Yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, insert my hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all the loops. And then into the next stitch, we follow with a single crochet. And that single crochet kind of, you work it down and it kind of pops that to the back. So we'll do we will be doing two rounds of this stitch. This hat sort of is, can be reversible. It can be, the inside's gonna look somewhat the same as the outside, so. Just like this, the matching scarf that goes with this. Okay, so do cluster and single crochet around it. All right, I'm here at the end of the round. I have one stitch to go, and you know how I said we've worked in pairs, even number of stitches, so we started with a cluster, we'll end with a single crochet. So the pair is cluster, single, cluster, single. So last stitch will be single, and let's join into our marked stitch. chain one and turn and we're going to do the same thing again start in this first stitch with a cluster go ahead and mark that and work single crochet into the next stitch 
So there's two rounds of the, this alternating cluster and single crochet stitch. All right, I'm here for my last stitch. And like I said, I, I kind of don't need to mark anymore because I can always see this, I don't know where we joined. <laughs> so I always know that's where I've joined. So I'm working my last single crochet. Okay. But I, I do like marking that stitch, the first stitch of the round. Join, chain, turn. We're back to working the herringbone stitch. And we will have four rounds of this. Get that marked. Let me show you on a hat, uh, another hat I'm working on. So this is our two rounds of herringbone. This is our two rounds of the cluster chain uh, single crochet. And now we're gonna have four rounds of herringbone, four rows, whatever. Then you're gonna do two more rounds and I'm gonna meet you back on this round because we're gonna do some decreasing. That's how we're gonna start bringing this hat in. So work four rounds of herringbone and two rounds of the cluster single crochet and I'll meet you back on this round when we're ready to do some decreasing. So it's time to do a round of decreasing. So join this last round of the cluster stitch round. Chain and turn. Now on this round of half herringbone, half double crochet, we're going to work into the first two stitches. And then skip a stitch. Work into the next two stitches. and skip a stitch. So we'll just do that around the entire hat, work two stitches, and then skip one. Now as you make it back around, you'll see that there's actually three stitches at the end, and that's totally fine. So join this round and turn. And on this round, you just work one uh, herringbone per stitch. This will continue to pull that hat in for the decrease. So we're just gonna still just work one. Okay, so that was a round of just working one herringbone per stitch, but now let's join this round and work one more round of the decrease. And we'll do it in the exact same way that we did the other one. We'll work two stitches and skip a stitch. Now, well then after you do that decrease, then work one more round of working one herringbone into each stitch and I'll meet you back. And that will be our fourth round of herringbone. Now, if this is where you want to stop and make it a bun beanie, we're going to do that right now. So after you work this round, this is how you would finish it for a bun beanie, is you're going to get an elastic and place it, let's see. Yeah, 
I've already joined and turned. So what you're going to do is just place it on the inside of the hat like this and work single crochet around the elastic. And this will further gather the hat in. So that you can uh, feed a ponytail through it. Almost there. There we go. And just slip stitch to the first stitch. Give it a little chain one. Cut that off. Weave that in and you've got yourself a bun beanie. So my girls like to do that. They like to pull their ponytail through and there you go. So that's an easy way to finish it off and then that way it gives them a little bit of elastic for their hat. Now, if you don't want to finish it that way and you want to go ahead and just finish it plain, we're going to just do another round of decrease in the exact same way, work two stitches, skip, and then do another round of herringbone and then we'll cinch it tight. So I'll meet you back after two more rows. Okay, so I've got those two rounds worked. I'll clip off, give myself a long tail, and Then I'll just simply weave in, in and out of these stitches here to gather this in. I'll call this the dreamy hat to go with the dreamy scarf. So I'll just work that around and around until it's cinched in tight. Now, another idea I have for you, if you don't wanna just have it like a, a, a flat, a tight beanie type hat, is uh, my idea is for you to find a, get a larger button and on the underside of the hat, go ahead and um, when you're done uh, in cl closing this up, is to go ahead and sew it to the underside of the hat. You know, work your way down in there and I, I need to switch needles, it doesn't go through. But anyway, you get the gist. Sew that there so that then if you find a pom-pom that has these elastics, you can easily just, with a crochet hook, pull this elastic down through the top of the hat and twist it around the button. And then you've got the pom-pom. So I will finish that up too. So anyway, that is the dreamy hat. So cute, looks really cute on. You can see the pictures of my daughter, Annie. She loves to wear these on the chili mornings here in Arizona, especially the ones where we can put our ponytails through. So, all right, good luck to you making your dreamy hat to match the dreamy scarf.